Welcome to the Endless Honeymoon oh, Podcast. Don't use that. I yeah, just yeah, want to no, no, say. Out, out, don't worry. I just want to. We were say, talking shit about. I won't even tell you what area, <laughs> but about people that it would have been a very spicy drop. No. But it's gonna get edited out. Yeah, yeah. Star Trek talk. Oh, sorry. We were sorry, talking. Sorry, sorry. We were talking None? Star Trek, but. But that's our main point of that like, is connection. our connection. Introduce our guest, honey. Well, the one and only, the ta- Tawny Newsom, the one and only. Yes, I but so. she is. I mean, From you are the hottest, tracks. the hottest Trekkie I've ever met. Oh, I was floored you. that you were a Trekkie. Somebody <laughs> doesn't know seven of nine. Yeah, you ever met Jerry Ryan? Uh, You're hotter. Yeah. I'm sorry. It's so funny you oh said no. God. Don't no. say that. The fans will come after me. <laughs> it's so funny you said no star. To be honest, um, I'm not going to get into how hot you are. That's not a comfort zone for me, and I yeah. don't think you want that either. either. Do you want to talk but about how it's the dog's last podcast? I will say podcast? who I find the hottest Star Trek person to be, and it would definitely be, I believe his name is Armin Sheeran, who played Quark. Armin Shimmerman. Shimmerman. Yeah. He's one of my guys. He's pretty hot in like a in like a I love Shakespeare kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> he is, but he does. <laughs> he loves Shakespeare. Shakespeare. I, I love him. I love him. All right. You said no Star Trek talk and you immediately opened. You teed us up. Sorry. Yeah. What are you going to do? I just wanted um, to say that this is Cutie's last podcast. Yeah. And Tawny is horrified that she has been is our guest I on that. I wish you hadn't told me it was her last podcast. I also. She wants to go down. She said she's had enough. So have I. But I. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want anyone to know it. What if I told you this is my last like interview podcast anything? Are you going to retire be... or you're going to put you're going to be put down? <laughs> up, to, up to you to figure out. <laughs> well, the crazy thing that happened is I had a friend over like uh, three weeks ago. She came up to Cutie, started crying and said she told me she's done. Who is this friend? Wait, hold on. And then Armin Shimmerman. <laughs> okay. That, now I believe it. <laughs> and but I believe her and I think that she couldn't tell me that. She could only tell my friend. And then my friend sent me flowers the next day saying Tony's uh, graying out on the psychic dog I'm psychic so- talk. Yeah, I don't buy the psychic dog. I'm shit. sorry for your loss. And so those flowers have been rotting upstairs. <laughs> it's been like three weeks now, so I feel like she's the bad omen. She's wishing this dog's death. No, the dog is done. Um, the dog, uh, she's had a full life. She's got an IMDb page. She's just looking at you, pleading with you as you're saying this. <laughs> oh, this is depressing. Okay, Tawny, I'm sorry. Uh, w- wait, we were going. We were talking about retirement from podcasting. Oh, but I was saying, uh-huh. wouldn't it be nice if or your friend could come over and say Tawny's done? Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she could read the tea leaves of my career. <laughs> it's your agent. <laughs> <laughs> Tony's done. You're like, ooh, and I'm like, right, because of the strike, right? No, 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 it's bigger. Th- it's way bigger than that. But like after the strike, we'll all come back to work. It's not about work, Tony. <laughs> okay. You're done, done. Okay, so yeah. do I get to like, do I still get to live in Los Angeles? You don't get to live. Burbank. Yeah, yeah, you got to move okay. to Burbank. Um, <laughs> Just me and horses. <laughs> now, Tony and Natasha, you guys were in a movie together. Is that right? Yeah, but I don't yes. think we can Am talk I a good about interviewer? it. Do you think I'm a good interviewer? Now, I hear you guys were in a movie together. Is yeah, that right? You heard tell, it. Me about, tell me about that. You heard it from your wife who was gone for <laughs> three weeks or whatever. Go ahead and talk I about that. I don't think we're allowed well, to promote not, our movie. Oh, you can't, geez, this is, this is going to be interesting. Yeah, what are we going to do what, here? What, what, what do you, what, what, if you were to be in a movie, what, kind, what genre of movie would you guys want to be in together? Uh, horror. Ooh. Oh, really? That surprises me. You like the gore? I would like to act in a horror movie. Have you been in a horror movie? Like, I'm really oh. good at screaming. Why don't I know? I don't think so. That's probably a good indication I wasn't. Have you ever, speaking of be, of your time being done, have you ever been killed? Um, yes. My very first job, I was talking to a friend about this. My friend has a very beautiful career. And he was like, my first job was blah, blah, blah. And I was like, yeah, that's very cool. My first job was, I said, hi, my name is Jen. And then I got hit by a car. <laughs> I was in Chicago fire. <laughs> that's very Wait, funny. Wait, you say, hi, my name is Jen. And you get hit by a car? Another scene. But oh, another scene. Literally in one scene. I'm hi, like, my- hi, I'm Jen. And then the next time you see me, I've been hit by a car and I'm on a stretcher. <laughs> Because Hi, My Name is Jen, immediate car feels like a comedic beat. It doesn't feel yeah, Chicago that fire. that doesn't feel like a dick wolf. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I will say um, I've had a lot a lot of lows in the in my career. Yeah. I, I do, well, I just feel like, you know, when you're coming out here without, you know, anyone to introduce you. Like I have friends who had sure. like, um, what's it called when someone kind of helps you? Like, a mentor? A mentor. Oh, okay. Got it. Uh, it's like a, you know, things that they, people make sure their kids, I just didn't have anything. And I feel like I just was constantly humiliated. You had myself. that <laughs> weird racist German dominatrix that Ooh. you worked for. 
Yeah, but she was trying to get me like sex gigs. Yeah, a oh, mentor. She wasn't trying to get you guest spots. <laughs> <laughs> you need a dominatrix who's trying to get you like a co-star. You know. Yeah, yeah. I'm doing an arc with this um, 65 year old CEO that likes to be pissed on. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm, doing, I'm working with him right <laughs> Is now. It single or multi cam? <laughs> well, it, dep- it depends on what cams? he's in the mood for. Yeah. I did watch her it's piss POV on someone cam. once. You did? Uh-huh. You, you watched her pee on someone? Mm-hmm. He was in the bathtub. And she okay. was like, I'm going to have my assistant she come was, in? She was, I was her assistant at a clothing store and she'd be like, oh, come in. Okay, I have an appointment at one and then we'll discuss what you have to bring to uh, the store. Huh. And like, she'd be like, hold on. And she'd be like, shut up, slave. And then she would just like pee on him and then huh. get on the computer and show me what what clothes now, needed to be. Okay, <laughs> I just want the logistics of her going from like business with you to peeing on the man. You're thinking, where's the underwear? How's it? What's going on? Did she yeah. have a she-we? What was it happening? Was, it was... No, she was standing up on the rim of the bathtub. I was hoping for an act and out. Just, <laughs> you got it. Tony, you got what you yeah, wanted. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and just like actually using her clit like it was a dick kind of, you know, like like just kind of moving it around and pissing yeah, yeah, on yeah. him. Wait, do and you they think, all want to be called. This a big a, reveal. Do you think women pee out of their clitorises? Is, or I don't know. What is it? You read the Yeah, it is. Our daughter calls it her pee hole. And I know that's wrong. That is right. That's more right I than mean, clitoris. Call it your pee hole. That's more right. Yeah, okay. it's more accurate than peeing out of your clitoris, I think. <laughs> she, yeah. So, and do you think you were part of? Like, did the man was the man like for for a bonus? I want your assistant uh, unwittingly involved in this. I, it, it, more humiliation, right? Yeah. You know, I I think that everyone would go there. However, she had no line. She right. would just be like. You know, okay, extra small. Uh, uh, hello, what are you into? You know, like she was just right. like she didn't doing have great boundaries. No, no. But boundaries. he was stoked. I mean, that's a twofer. <laughs> to be, if you're that guy, you're like, oh, yeah. so you're gonna pee on me, and your intern is gonna look on in disgust. I mean, this is a, yeah. bo- a bonus. That's called uh, clinical cucking. I'm sure I've said this clinical on the podcast before, but yeah. I did do one job with her, and oh. we Which was? it was seven women. Did I already say this? Yeah, we tarred, uh, we tarred and feathered this man. <laughs> And they got and him. Then, they got I, him the hell out of Dodge City. I, I'm sorry. You tarred and fe- he literally wanted to be tarred and feathered. What do so you he mean was tar? He was naked. We put some sticky molasses thing all over him. Threw feathers on him, which, by okay. the way, seems like it's from like it's I don't know. Time. Oh yeah, it's, it's like a cowboy punishment. Is that that's what that is? That's okay. a traditional cowboy punishment. Mm-hmm. Okay, yeah. and then we all had back squirt when America guns. was great. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we had squirt guns. There was like seven of us. I don't even think I had. To, I had. To, I don't even think there was a dress code. I just like wore whatever. And we had to like <laughs> spray him with these wa- the, with these squirt guns and, and roast him, which I think might have been the beginning of my roast career. Oh. Oh, so you were <laughs> and you loved it so much. You were like, I want to do this to people who aren't tarred and feathered. I'm, I'm hung up on the tar of it all. But then I realized that it's more of like a um, like a production tar. It's more of like a, a television film. Tar. It must have been. It can't be a real tar because that seems like a thing that brings death. Uh, do you <laughs> like die from a tar? I think it's humiliation and it takes months to get it out or something. It wasn't just a way to kill someone I embarrassingly? Think, I don't know, actually. That's a great question. I think yeah. tar and feather was, it was not. was probably honey. Ex- I mean, honey and feather sounds yeah, so much yeah, yeah. better. <laughs> Tawny, did you have any jobs, weird jobs, uh, before you became an actor slash personality in this Hollywood milieu? Yeah. Oh, thank you. Thank yeah. you for personality. Before, before hello, Jennifer, car yeah. crash. <laughs> <laughs> car crash, just me. Or was I in a car? I don't know. I furthered. You know what was the best part of that job is that I got paid every time they used this picture of me. They would show like that she was like looking at the main actress was like looking at a picture being like my best friend Jen was killed. And it like fueled her whole arc for two seasons. And so they'd show a picture oh, of me you and I'd ha- make a little check. I'd get a little check. You had a recurring but it was your headshot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was just a picture of me. So I think I got like 40 bucks every time they used it. And I'd see that 40 bucks and I'd be like, hell yeah. Oh, that's great. Um, Weird jobs. Or I mean. What did you do before you beca- became an actor? It's hard to remember anything before I walked don't put through her, this door. Don't put her on the spot, honey. It's not on the spot. It's your. I mean. I think that's a normal question. Okay. Wait, I, why does that make you feel like I'm put on the spot? I think oh, she, I don't know. I, I just feel thinks, like I started talking about this <laughs> and now I don't no, want to like. Natasha thinks I'm saying, have you ever pissed on a CEO? But I'm <laughs> not. I'm saying like, what did you do before you were an actor? Well, I don't think I would classify that as a weird job. I think <laughs> the weird jobs that I had, I was one of those um, follow along dancers at mitzvahs oh so, <laughs> you, you were a hype person at yeah, a bar mitzvah? yeah 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 oh a lot interesting of like rock and robin and sure stuff. uh and then i transitioned to now is this dog long full of life full of okay. life yes nice loves to you, meet you. Full i of can life. form a bond with this yes, one yes. Hi, a fan you? of yours even oh 
I'm a fan of all dogs, and I wish I wish them life. Um, That's beautiful. Is that the kind of thing you would say at the bar mitzvahs? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't really let us talk. They weren't like into letting the dancers have like a speech. Uh-huh. Um, I worked at a Hollywood video. I uh, yeah, I was a barista. I was a bartender. I was a bartender at one of those terrible places, like one of those uh, in Chicago on Division Street. There were all these like mm. Irish bars, and you used to have to we weren't allowed trays. So you'd have to carry like stacked glassware. So you'd carry like five giant beer mugs, like cartoon, like the Simpsons beer mugs. And then you'd put coasters on top and you'd put like back glasses with mixed drinks, coasters on top of that. And then you'd put shot glasses. Oh, it was like a Jenga thing that you were bringing. Yeah. Like if you had to bring like a bunch of rounds of drinks, you just had to stack them up like a crazy person. And people in Chicago drink so much. The bars are open till four. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I worked at the double door. I worked. Oh my God. That was my favorite venue. That was a, yeah. Cause they had, is it gone? Yeah, they turned into into a Yeti cooler store. I you're literally die. you're talking shit right now, I'm Connie. Sorry. How dare Did they you? Pay you guys no, for you're this? literally drinking out <laughs> of a Yeti. They pay you this? They this ruined is quality the stuff. Best <laughs> venue in Chicago. The fucking Stones played there. A secret concert in 1996. It was the best venue oh. in town. I played at all of them, and they replaced it with a cooler store. Did you go to the? Oh, hidden... by the way, Tani's also a very very talented singer. Oh, is that right? Thank you. That I didn't know. I hope so. Um, and I'm mad about the fucking Yeti store, but I do like their coolers. They're great coolers. Did you go to the? Uh, to the Rolling Stone Secret Show? In 1996. Hey, by the way. <laughs> she was probably born then. You're giving honey. me attitude? Yeah, I was born then. I remember 96, <laughs> I was peaking. At what? Yeah. I was like at a rave, like at the prime of my social life. I think I was, I, I must have been 13. I, I would have been 16. Okay. Now, well, we've, that... now we've figured out exactly how old we both are. Wait, you guys. Were you trying to be cagey about it? No, no, no. I just, when you responded to me like that, it made me think you were like 20 years old. Well, like that you don't even remember 96. Maybe I was trying to be cagey about it. Mm. I feel like I'm always trying to be cagey about my age until today. I Today's went to my day? first mammogram <laughs> and I walked in my very first one. I was like, guys, I'm here. And like three different texts were like, how old are you? I was like, I just turned 40. And they were like, oh my God, girl, we thought you were here too soon. That is so funny. And it was funny. a real boost. Yeah. That's cool. You did it the day you turned, like right when you turned 40. I mean, it, it like is February, but whatever. But, it is know. very funny to walk out of a mammogram appointment, like just feeling like fully like just <laughs> sex in the city, like hair yeah. at your at Did it your hurt hair. though? They like squeeze it, it really hard. Hurt. I don't know why. Maybe I'm dead. I don't, <laughs> it did not feel bad to me. I was, I literally walked out of there and I was like, why does everyone like complain about this? And the mammogram tech was Russian and she goes, babies. <laughs> And I don't know if she meant because they've had babies. Maybe it hurts more. Oh, I don't know. I've it's never fibroids. I, um, honey, I w- you don't know anything. What I know a lot about, about titties. What are you talking about? He, his area is just what you pee out of. <laughs> <laughs> That's when it comes to biology. Physiology. Yeah, that I know really well. You're like waist up. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> Can I say one more bad Hollywood job I had? Oh, of course. I had an audition to be a reader for an audition that Alicia Cuthbert had. <laughs> Wait. What? They were oh, like, wow. we want you to audition to be, to be a reader, a reader, because she's up for a really big part. So I had to audition to be the person she read. It was like literally the and back of my head. I didn't get the you part. didn't get it. Do you think, though, it's because and no, shade there you go. To I like what you're going to do. Did you maybe outshine her? I mm-hmm. think it was they more about that. they wanted a certain height. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> well, that is why I've said that I booked more in covid than i did before because i book more off tape because i think people are like yeah yeah she said five nine five ten sure 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 but when i walk into a room and people go like whoa <laughs> i feel like that's keeping me from jobs are you six feet tall i'm i'm five ten okay. it's a good thing they didn't do that at the mammogram clinic though when you walk in they look oh, up whoa, whoa! yeah <laughs> Well, why are you here? Uh, <laughs> we don't. The machine doesn't. It doesn't go up there. Well, Tani, this is an advice podcast. And oh, right. I know you're in a good relationship because yeah. I had just met you and your sweet partner invited me to some surprise party he was Aww. throwing oh, for you. Nice. Yeah, and that just. Oh, and it was so it was also my daughter's birthday that same day. That's why I couldn't come. Oh, my God. We're birthday twins. February 23rd. 24th. OK, mm-hmm. so, so you're lying. No, her you're birthday. Straight birthday was on you're the straight 23rd. up lying. That's crazy. My but birthday was on the 23rd. Just on the 24th, I had to leave for the Star Trek cruise. Mm. Jealous? Oh, wow. <laughs> I know you are. I would. Would I? Am I a big enough Star Trek fan to go? No. Yes. I No. I, yes, you are. I would go You'll in your position. my guest. I would go in your I would go with you. Yeah. I would go in your position if I had to work. I, it, as a fan, I would just. You I would I, love I, it. I'm sure. No, I know. I'm not saying it's because Tony, I. this sounds psychotic. No. It is. I'm you're, not, you're stuck in this, on the sea with these people? Yeah. 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 
with these people, like yeah. people like Moshe. Yeah. yeah. And f- and much worse and way better. <laughs> well, the thing is that they're boldly going where no ship has gone before. Mm-hmm. But do you have to talk to them in the cafeteria Constantly. line? Constantly. The second you walk out of your room. Imagine getting cruise COVID on the Star Trek cruise. Oh, my God. Oh, that. Can I, mean, I get a hypo spray? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> Over they just, here. They beam me down to sick bay. No, I didn't get sick at all. It was great. It was so weird. It was insane. I feel like I was up for three days. It was fun. It was very fun. You don't have to. Everyone's na- a maniac. It was the the Beyonce album was still like top of everyone's mind. Everyone dressed up, you know. So you got Spock on the dance floor, like twerking it to energy, and you're just like, <laughs> this is incredible. I have it's to a say, fever dream. when I think when I think Trekkie, I don't think Beyonce fan, and that's well, my ignorance. Well, uh, now you've met me. Yeah. So. Well, yeah. Okay, sure. <laughs> But I don't think you either, honestly. I think. Well, you should start. I, I should start. I should. I should begin. Wait, do, you don't have to t- name names, and you wouldn't anyway. But do any of the um, of the like actor people at these cons hook like go and hook up with Wait. fans? Do any? I was gonna say you say actor people as though you don't consider me one of them. No, you, you are I'm one just of them. On there as a fan? No, I know. Because I would. <laughs> Girl got paid to be on this no, no, trip. No. Okay? I will pay uh, but next year. It's not. It was not me disparaging you professionally. It was me uh, actually supporting you sure. as a woman. Sure. I don't think I was not asking whether Janeway is sometimes making out with a Star Trek fan. I was asking uh, probably <laughs> about Shimmerman. No, but are people? Are there any cast members who ever like? You're like, oh god, they're sluts. When they go to these cons, they're always like, gosh, I don't know. You know, the weird thing is that like now with the new shows, there's kind of like a new young crop of us. Right. Because everybody else, they're all like in their 70s and right. 80s and they still are very like youthful and fun. But I don't see them like cruising for some strange <laughs> at these cons. <laughs> like, I think they're just a little past that. Um, but I can't I, I can't say what they did, you know, back in the 70s, 80s. Yeah. I don't know. All right. Well, we've got all the information I needed out of this podcast. I just did a show with William Shatner. That's How right. was that? Well, we didn't see each other. He was reading his lines off of a camera in a different country, mm. but a different continent, even. <laughs> different mm-hmm. continent. Yeah. He was beaming in, but uh, he definitely was still trying to give you know give it his all. So that's good. I liked it. It's yeah. inspiring when you see people because you know there's that quote: "Artists don't retire." Right. And I do feel that in you know, and you see it, and I think it's always nice when you. I was just looking at old Vanna White. She's still turning those She's letters still in turning her. Turning those teeth. She's still turning the letters. She's seventy. She's still. What a what a career. What a life. Yeah. She was the first person to resist AI. She was like, you're not going to let some robot turn these letters. I'm going to do it. Also, today I was watching it because I'm, I'm doing the show. and uh, You're doing Wheel of Fortune. I'm doing Wheel of Fortune. And so her she and pat sajak come on arm in arm linked like like Aww. like uh she's his escort <laughs> that's, really that's, the, that's the beginning of the pat <laughs> sit in the bathtub you will get pee on you you sit there you little pig boy you want me to turn these letters okay so i want to ask tawny though does your partner i don't know are you guys married we are yes does your husband does he always do sweet things is this something you had to train him to do throwing a party mm. you know is or he's just a great guy he's a great guy i mean the party was me being like i need to have a party because i'm scared of death and i need to know that i matter <laughs> <laughs> and he was like great you probably shouldn't plan this because i think that'll be bad for your mental health so then he'll like take it over so i'm kind of like i'm the initiator of a lot of things in our life just because i think i'm the one with like the anxiety disorder and so i'm like we got to do stuff or else we'll we won't matter and then he'll a lot of times like take stuff off my plate which is my mm. love language someone take someone stuff doing off something my plate for me yeah is my love la- yeah. here's the problem natasha and i have okay she won't tell me what's on the plate well that's interesting because i just ah. sent him we just got into a fight but about the very phrase literally. take it off my plate yeah, really that is I've weird and it. eerie that you've brought it up yeah I've stepped in something <laughs> yeah so you you want this you want someone to come in and go babe i got it yes and i don't and i don't want to have like follow-up questions but it's i like Right, what right, you're right. saying because she's whispering in his ear and then she's stepping back i don't know i'm over here i don't know what's on the plate right how, 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 how can i take it off if i don't know what's on the plate natasha men just need direction is that the type of podcast you guys do where we're like, <laughs> like oh men they're just simple creatures they want to make us happy but you have to tell them how well all i want is a trad wife do you like, know what a trad wife is oh, of course i know that's what a all trad that's wife. A, I, all i all i want what's trad a trad wife? Trad wife a traditional wife traditional wife. Oh. traditional values gender roles she loves you don't dishes. want that. No, I don't want that. But they are funny and I am obsessed with them. They're amazing. They're always like a little too sexy yeah. in their in their non-sexy, you know, like yeah. the preppy all the way to the top, but but like 
if there's something like you're wearing pearls, but it. your tits are showing a little, a little bit. bit, and they're baking some dry ass right. looking cornbread, and right? Just like all of this is just for one man. Yeah. And I'm like, why is it so sensual? Men love meatloaf. Let's yeah. start there. <laughs> Their recipes always look bad too. I'm like, well, this I, food is bad because it's it's not. <laughs> It's Betty Crocker. Right. It's what yeah. they're they're calling. They, they are calling back to the 50s where yes. things were bland and everything was awful. And yes. they're always like, there's always a vague um, uh, uh, su- superior racial thing happening oh, in it yeah, too. Yeah, but yeah, they never yeah. say it, but it always feels implied. Right. Well, because you don't see like a black trad. <laughs> no, I don't think now, you don't, do. Now, don't send them to me because people are going to be like, they exist here. I'm like, I don't care. This is what happens to me with Star Trek too. I'll be like, you never see a blah, blah, blah in Star Trek. Then I'll get 50 memes of Picard sitting on a toilet. And I'm like, okay, I didn't, I didn't really need to see it. Um, yeah, their recipes always come from a time when like grapes and mayonnaise were yes. in the same dish. <laughs> yes, use your mold. That, the, yeah. uh, pour it into a mold era of food. You guys yeah. are hot for trad wives. I, they are I mean, They are fascinating. Well, it just seems simpler. Talk about somebody taking something off your plate. Yeah, oh. like, well, I'll take that off your plate. And I'll, I'll take turn it plate. into an unseasoned <laughs> dish. <laughs> Wait, I just thought of something. Could people like me and Tawny, career ladies, get a, a trad wife? Oh, like an... Oh, and a husband. No, that's yes. interesting. You guys get a trad wife to operate the way you operated for the dominatrix. She's like your yes. assistant and she comes in with all the trad stuff you don't have time for because you guys are like important women that are like killing it in the game. Yeah. Exactly. But then trad wife comes in and goes, Tawny and Natasha would love for you to uh, caulk the bathtub. <laughs> Oh, so they're also like a project manager. They're a project manager, yeah. Like a house manager. But only for things that are trad. Right. You know, they're not going to ever come in and be like, did you hear the new Beyonce album just dropped? They don't care about that. No, no, no. But they're like, Bing Crosby has a new album out. You (laughs) might want to hear that. Has a new album? Wow. (laughs) Hey, Tosh. Yeah, Mosh. You know, we were just talking about this recently. As I got to a certain age, I realized that men of a certain age, they die just because they have something go wrong and they go, I'm not going to no doctor. And then they're dead like a year later. I like going to the doctor early. It puts my mind at ease. And that's why I use ZocDoc. ZocDoc is comprised of thousands of medical professionals who are there to help you. They listen like a friend and give you the expert care you need. But it's easy to find them. That's the problem with not using an app like ZocDoc is that you just call a random doctor's office. They're like, yeah, we've got space for you in 2028. They'll tell you what doctors are available, when they're available, sometimes within the same day and usually the next day at least. On ZocDoc, you'll find quality doctors who focus on you, listen to you, and prioritize your care. You can put in what you want. You can see what the doctors look like. Maybe you want a female doctor. Maybe, like me, you like elderly doctors. Jewish doctors? No, no (laughs) profiling. But here's the thing. Wait, hold on. And they're close. You can find out, like, proximity-wise, too, so you don't always have to drive, like, 50 minutes to your dang doctor's appointment. And you just ask for a specialist. If you got that kind of insurance, which I do, you just say, oh, I want to go to dermatologist. I want to go to this. I want to go to that. ZocDoc makes everything easy. There's absolutely no reason to not use ZocDoc. You're probably thinking, I know the reason, because it's expensive. No! ZocDoc is free. It's a free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. Go to ZocDoc.com slash honeymoon and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top-rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash honeymoon. ZocDoc dot com slash honeymoon. All right. Speaking of trad wives uh, and people that could help us with our lives, why don't we become the trad wives to our callers okay, and give, okay. give, dole some of this wonderful advice out? That was a pretty good segue. That was almost as good of a segue as, now you guys out here were in a movie. Tell me about that. <laughs> I liked was it. was a question. I forgot you're from Chicago. You know, I'm from Rockford. Oh, you are from Rockford. I'm not really from there. I'm from the Bay Area, but I oh. lived there. Wait a minute. Where are you from? I'm from Vacaville. You're from Vacaville. Yeah. Damn. Oh, wait. You know, I was just with Jessica Gao. She just came from your brother's wedding. Oh, you That's went right. to her? Yeah, we'll talk. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. Jessica Jessica's is Jessica's waiting, coolest. and I thought she, the best. She, oh. she wore a Kirkland uh, onesie yeah. the entire day. Not at the wedding proper, <laughs> yeah. but every other time <laughs> I saw her. Every other time. She yeah. would have wore it at the wedding proper. If- <laughs> Lindsay. Lindsay, you're looking so solemn there. We want to help you. How oh, are you? sorry. I'm not solemn. Oh, okay. Nice good. to meet you all, though. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Would you consider yourself a trad wife? I am not a trad wife or a wife at all. Um, okay. Is so it an aspiration I don't for even you? know what that is. Oh, it's but a- I do have some opinions on Kirkland Signature. <laughs> okay, let's hear it. <laughs> Great. Let's, let's go. Well, I so I'm from I'm from the Seattle area and, and, and like Kirkland specifically. So like seeing... Well, actually, I'm from... 
Issaquah, which is 30 minutes east, which is where the Costco headquarters are. So seeing all these like people wearing Kirkland signature swag, I'm like, you don't even know when they were testing Von Dutch stuff in like the early, they would test it at Costco. So we got all the weird test products and shit. (laughs) Do you still have any? I'm seeing all these like Kirkland signature people and I live in DC. So it's already like devoid of culture. So Mm, it's like, I'll mm. see a guy and like, boat shoes and a Kirkland signature top. And I'm like, what is happening? Sure. Like it's, it's crazy. Cause okay. um, we used to just go there in high school and take our Costco cards and get like free lunch via samples. Oh, so. that's a classic sure. hustle. Yeah. I, lo- yeah. I love it. Wait, Lindsay, Wait, hold on one second. She's not frozen. Okay. Oh, am I? You're, it's not, it's your, not fault. your fault. It's our fault. You know how some people have dial up. Oh, there you go. Girl. We have water wheel. Okay. Th- well, there you go. I was on therapy. I, I had therapy this morning and my camera just like didn't work. So I was a little nervous for this. Mm. Okay. Well, this Lindsay, listen, I, I just therapy. want to introduce, make sure you <laughs> know. Agree. Yeah. Hopefully we'll talk about some of the same things. Uh, you know, it's me, Moshe and our friend, Tani Newsom. Hi. Hi, Tani. Nice. And Moshe and Natasha. Is I that Mayor no, Cutie? No, we see, yeah, that Mayor Cutie's down there on the floor. You can see her. That's who I'm most starstruck of. Oh, well, oh, this oh, is her last oh, podcast. oh, no, not next to Tawny. Tawny. That's Blanche. Blanche is full of life. Mayor Cutie's here with us. She's nodding out on the floor. Uh, it's very funny you saying this dog is full of life. She's taking a nap. She's taking a nap. looking like an old <laughs> scarf. <laughs> <laughs> Aww. All right, Lindsay, how can we help? Talk to us about what you brought up in therapy today. <laughs> well, I'm not going to talk to you about that. Exactly. Right. Maybe tangentially associated with that. But um, so I saw that Tawny was coming on the podcast and I... So I like specifically kind of tailored this question for her. No, that was that was fairly obvious in the way that you greeted us, which was, <laughs> oh, hi, Tawny. Oh, and oh, I'm so and, and others. We got, we well, got. I'm a big Trekkie. So like, sorry, Natasha. Live long and we, prosper. We're, we're out here. Um, we out here. <laughs> this is a hot Trek fan. Well, I know you are too, you, Moshe. But, and yeah. I know, Natasha, you like hate it. So well, at least that's that's what I've I've gleaned. But anyway, so um, just for context, I'm a 29 year old straight female. Uh, I just graduated from law school. Um, I live in DC, but I'm moving to New York in the next four months, in the next couple months. Um, and I really hate this like category slash description, but, um, I'm like a really big nerd in the sense, like I love sci-fi fantasy, all that stuff. Um, and, it's a big part of my personality. I could uh, never help with this question. So I'm just happy. <laughs> I hope I can. <laughs> no, but I think Natasha, you can really help because I think I come off not that way mm, in mm-hmm. the sense, like, I don't know. I, I, I think I come off sometimes kind of Bradwise. snobby and you don't come off snobby. I didn't mean like that, but I just mean like how I'm, I are really you saying do Natasha care doesn't, about like aesthetics. Natasha and like, doesn't come off love, s- snobby that you don't need to qualify that. That's it pays the bills. It's part of the brand. Right? Yeah. It's, it is the brand. Yeah. yeah. But what is your question? You don't want people to call you a nerd or what? What's... She wants to find nerd. Dick. No, no, no. <laughs> Sorry. I'll, I'll finish. Let me finish my question. Anyway. Yeah. So Back I off. just, but I really struggle engaging with others who also have these interests in the mm. sense that mm. like, um, and I was thinking about this, I think it's really tied up a lot with having to do with like being from Seattle and really like leaving there because like so much of that culture there is like tied up with tech and like nerd culture. They really overlap and like growing up there and stuff like I'm, I worked in the service industry for a long time, like comic con, um, and like working in restaurants, especially once Amazon and shit got built around that, which they have a lot of overlap. Those like the men especially were like the worst, most like chauvinistic, patriarchal, awful people to Mm. interact with. And like, so this like nerd culture is very associated with this, uh, part of me that's very resentful being from Seattle, watching like big tech take over, um, which I know Moshe, you're from Oakland. I'm sure you've probably experienced the same thing. Um, So I guess I just, I'm looking for tips on sort of like navigating this because like, I do really want to like find someone and share this like nerd dumb love with, but I'm not interested in like a guy in a fucking utilicilt, like (laughs) 
and a ponytail. I, I, you know, like I, and, and that's the worst of the worst. Like, I feel like I'm going to get super canceled with this, but like tips on sort of navigating it because it's such a huge part of me. Like I fucking love it. But Mm. then it's like, I can't share it with a lot of people. And I'm a lawyer. So like, they're all, I, they don't. Yeah. Anyway. Got it. Got it. (laughs) You're not meeting a lot of nerd lawyers. Sounds like. I mean, they are, but they're more, I don't know. So, I'm hoping it'll be different in New York. Like I am moving to New York in the next like month or so. so. I mean, isn't this obvious? She needs to get on this cruise. Oh, it's oh Star Trek God. cruise. <laughs> Look, I'm not here to promote the Star Trek cruise, but that sounds you, like my nightmare. If you want to hook up <laughs> with Trekkies, <laughs> that's the place to do it. As long as they're wearing the eyebrow, the like whatever. Which What's eyebrow? The... There's so many wait, wait, eyebrows. Wait, 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 wait. You There's... came on this thing saying you're a big Trekkie and you're pushing your forehead and saying the eyebrow. <laughs> Talk about I'm not a, the sorry, eyebrow. Sorry, I'm not, I'm not, sorry. I'm more like Star Wars that oh. not a big, I didn't mean to say big Trekkie. I do like it in the sense I came to it because I really like Prodigy and Lower Decks. I'm not a gatekeeper. But I forget. <laughs> I'm not a gatekeeper. I just was like, what eyebrow are we talking about? She's like, I really like Star Wars. You know, with the glow swords and stuff, whatever they, when they use the, when they use the push. Um, okay. What, what thoughts, what thoughts? I have a couple. Well, first of all, I just want to say, I don't think your whole personality has to be like, can't you, can't you let that side of you out and it doesn't have, or you want to entwine it with romance? Um, I can let it out, but it's like, in my experience, I've, I've more found that like, if I let it out, I either find guys who are like kind of patronizing and are like, I want to tell you everything about this. Blah, yeah. blah, 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 blah. Um, and which they do. Cause obviously like, they're excited to talk about it. But I think as men, a lot of the time, like in their social position, they only know how to talk about it to other men, um, which I can have some compassion for, but it gets old. Men talk like that about everything. <laughs> That's true. I talked about that, about the female um, urinary tract system earlier today. Mm-hmm. I mean, I was even able to mansplain that, which yeah. I think to me, to honestly, that's a feather in my cap. But it was educational. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't know. But uh, um, I was just going to say that, you know, I can't speak for other fandoms because I'm not really in them. So I can't talk broadly about nerddom. Like, I, I'm not really into Marvel. I'm not an, a comic book person. Yeah. Um, but in terms of like the Trekkies, I will say that, uh, especially recently, I feel like that I feel like Trek has done a good job of really shouting out, like not shouting out like, hey, you're cool. Like, but shouting and pushing out any sort of like bigotry, misogyny. Like they really are. I do a lot of conventions. I meet a lot of fans and it's just getting fewer and fewer. And it's not that those people don't exist, but it's that they're realizing that like the rest of us aren't tolerating them. So those types of dudes you're talking about are either getting less or they're shutting up more. Um, Mm. And so I I really find it to be like a very welcoming, very sweet, very leftist, very like, you know, uh, uh, lots of different genders, very, yeah, I find it to be like a warm, welcoming space diversity wise. That said, if you want someone to share in this interest with you, you're going to have to like go into those spaces Mm. to go find those people. So you're going to have to wade through some shit. You know, you're going to have to wade through some, some complicated types, I think, but I don't know. There's yeah. also as ma- as many different types of like, there's so many different niche communities, you know, Reddit is a cesspool, but it can also be like, you can find really, really specific communities that are like women who cosplay, who do this and, you know, so that you can sort of like narrow yeah. in on exactly. I don't what understand you want. Reddit, but I should, I should like get to know it. I, you might just, have I, to I, I mean, dig, I should figure it out. Dig deep into the fan community. It might just take some like sifting into the different fan communities that you want to be yeah. in to find. Cause I do know, I know that these guys are out there. I meet them all the time and I'm always like, Oh, you're so sweet. I wish I had someone to hook you up with. Tawny did, did, Armin Shimmerman. Yeah, he's very married. <laughs> as he's become the might I suggest the Armin stud Shimmerman. In your mind. That's right. <laughs> Wait, Tawny, does your husband is does he have nerd uh tendencies um he has become oh you know what actually he was more of like a fantasy geek growing up he mm. watched like all everything that's with more my speed in actually it. hey he's taken <laughs> you want you want a shirtless long-haired man on a white pony to pull i want up and, henry cavill in the witcher sure we all now. want that you want At someone who, door, you want someone yeah. who has a hard opinion about whether dragons are good or evil <laughs> <laughs> like but from personal yeah. <laughs> Like yes. personal experience. Yeah. I mean, okay. here's what I think. Uh, Tosh, do you have any? Do you have any thoughts? No, it's just funny because that's like my five year old. <laughs> like she wants. To, she's always grilling me. Like, are fairies real? Are mermaids real? 
But she so. also knows they aren't. Yes that's and yes. No. That's what's funny is <laughs> I'll say, I'll go like, what do you think? And she like wants, she's like, I want to believe. She's like yeah. an X-Files person, but yeah. she doesn't. She knows it's I also fake. just rewatched and starting watching the X-Files and that's a whole new thing that I'm like, I could get into that's that. pretty fandom. great. Here's Listen, my, you're a hot lawyer moving to Manhattan. I you're going to be all right. <laughs> yeah. You're going to find someone. You can find every flavor of nerd there that you want. But it's also like, yeah, you're a hot lawyer moving to Manhattan and you're like, I guess my problem is it's hard to find a man because I'm like into Star Wars. It's like every single man, every man is down. Every Well, it's more than that. It's like I'm a hot, but like I also have a D&D game. Like I also, you know, like all of this stuff. And a lot of guys like they're. I don't know. Maybe I'm just not putting. You just need to be in my DMs. Like, I just need to take all the guys. I think it's here. Go to her. I think it's also yeah. Like I, I do think they're like are fundamentally dudes who like really want a girl who doesn't have like a passion or opinion. It's just kind of like okay, being like yeah, I like this. I like that. I can do this. But then like they actually want to get intense about it. This brings me to my biggest thought about you. Your question was essentially, I'm really into nerd stuff. How do I find a guy in the nerd space, even though sometimes I find them a little weird or off-putting? But in in asking that question, I found out you used to live in the home of Kirkland, that you uh, don't like the patriarchy, that you're a lawyer, that you went to law school, you're moving to Manhattan, and that, that tech overtook Seattle and gentrification is an issue. And you, I think you're probably thinking too much about this, is, a, is probably mm-hmm. my guess. And like... And, and you're you're over analyzing right. yeah. as an attorney, you're over analyzing mm-hmm. what kind of shitty man you're going to meet that you haven't met yet. And you're probably telling the guys on your dates about all the shitty guys and that no one understands you. And or I don't know, maybe mm. you aren't. But I would really try to, you know, as a no, I am as a as an experiment, try to not you know, it's like controlling what you say is can be very challenging. Like I'm personally trying to go through some things where I eliminate certain things from my vocabulary and mm. it's, you know, it's maybe Phrases that- like on my plate. <laughs> but, <laughs> but maybe it would be good for you, a good exercise on your next date. Just let it bubble up re- naturally. Like, and if he's like, oh, what are you doing Wednesday? Well, I am in a D&D thing. It's something I like to do. And just see mm-hmm. how they respond instead of already putting on it, or, all, you know, all of this negativity. Or going, like Tawny yeah. said, into some of these spaces with the, you know, that saying what, when, when you walk around as a hammer, everything looks like a nail. Like if you go into these spaces, so you go to a con and you're like, oh, I'm going to meet these fucking utility kilt, fucking loser, bro, tech bro, idiot. <laughs> then that's what you're going to see constantly when you go there. But if you go there, like, you know, with an open heart and an open mind, I, I, I'm sure that there are cute guys that are into what you're into that'll be like, that are not going to be put off by an attorney in Manhattan. They're going to be like, no, gonna that lose sounds good. Yeah, they're going to lose their mind. <laughs> exactly. You're going to show up in a in a lower decks cosplay or yes. a, 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 something from Star Wars. A robe, Star Wars. a Jedi uh, robe. Princess Leia. Like, a robe. <laughs> <laughs> doing something from Star Wars. Yeah, you're going to show up as Princess Leia yeah. and they're going to be like, oh my a God. A bathrobe. <laughs> a Star Wars themed bathrobe. <laughs> Knowing me, I'd probably show up as like Jabba the Hutt. There you I go. Like, even oh, like cooler. things to affix to my face. That's like, cute. <laughs> this is the other thing is that the guys and at these cons they like funny women mm-hmm. they like I like I, I do think the tide is turning at least for Trekkies I, I can't talk about the other fandoms but like the tide is turning they like funny people who are clever and cool and weird and who are who know a lot about it my other uh, like opposite advice was going to be date someone who doesn't know shit about this and then Ooh, you intro. get to be the mansplainer oh and be that's like, nice yeah let me show you some well Star I've done Trek. that before <laughs> and it's like that's when I really not that my only my interests are dominated by this stuff they aren't but like when I do have free time, especially as an attorney, this is kind of the stuff I like to do because I don't have a lot of free time. Yeah. Sure. Listen, so I'm not so- technically an attorney yet because I just took the bar and haven't gotten my results yet. But I like you're it. You're thinking positive. You're going to pass. Combine. Well, I listened to a lot of this podcast while I was uh, while I was studying. I have to say, you guys gave me a lot of comic relief. Love so. it. I would also say on your dates, let the other person talk a little bit more. Maybe. <laughs> No, you're, I, yeah. you're intimidating, you know, and you like ha- you, you're very smart and you know what you want to say. But it's like, I think just like letting up a little bit will help. Trad wife. T- bring some of that trad wife energy <laughs> trad into these. Is that what a trad wife is? Like being quiet? No, it's like traditional, like, a, you know, a yeah, traditional. Yeah, it kind of is. But I, w- Tawny does I, not agree with us. I, I only disagree because if you l- let up and let other people talk more, I have a feeling that's not you. And then in four months when you are you, that dude's going to be like, who is this? So okay, I think, good point. I think you got to be your full look as someone who talks too much and is a lot. You got to be you got to be fully a lot from moment one. because They got to know lot. if they're into it or not. Yeah. And, I, I, and I also, like that. I, yeah. I think that the type that you've chosen, you're lucky. Like those guys must be faithful, right? Yeah. <laughs> 
More than like if you're into guys who like at or who are into abs. This is how bigoted Natasha is against just, like yeah, track fans. She's like, there's no way they're cheating on their partners <laughs> because they're lucky that they even found a partner in the first place. <laughs> oh my God. No, but I agree with her. Like I'm, and I know I'm a prize. Like I know I'm you're a, a prize. Like, I know you are. That. Like, you are. That's so a big part I feel of like I'm on a tightrope and on both sides is just like fire. <laughs> and on the other side is like a dying dog. Uh, <laughs> okay, Tani, do you have any last words since you're the most uh, sympathetic, I suppose. Um, I think just, I think have faith that because of the vastness of the internet and the mm. vastness of your interests that you can get very, very specific and find communities that will yield the type of men you're looking for. You will just have to look. It's like hunting for that perfect settee, that, that vintage settee to go in your farmhouse mm. or whatever. Mm. Like you gotta just look. I was trying to sound rich. That I don't know. Good. You, gotta, yeah. <laughs> you just gotta look. I've got a farmhouse in DC. Yeah, just like right here. Because like studio apartment. The, the way that nerds have been painted since the 80s and 90s is just it's not the case anymore right. just because now we know there's a million different types of people there's millions of different types of nerds in so. fact historically you couldn't have picked a better time to go into the nerd community to find a partner it's yeah. not in the 70s maybe it was a you know a guy like the comic book guy from the simpsons now it's just like regular every single person is into this stuff so yeah you know, there's somebody out there that will share your interests and not be a total douche yeah the All fact right. that i found a a, a podcast with a bunch of like black women in their 50s called the sci-fi sisters they just talk about star right. trek in depth i was like wait you exist wow and that took me like being in the f fandom and working for the franchise so you just gotta look people yeah. are out there well i think you got great advice and good luck in manhattan in your new your new um, life may the force be with you <laughs> tony did you get that may reference the force be with you yeah i did yeah it was from star and star live Wars. long and prosper Love you guys. And I really do love Lower Decks. It's so good. Thank you. Thank you so much. Bye. All right. Long live Mayor Cutie. Yeah. Thank you. Oh, man. <laughs> That's funny that you you were so tuned. You're like, you fucking, you talking like shit you over here. I, I heard me. it. I heard the tea I coming. Heard I heard a soft tea. Enough Star Wars fans make fun of me. I'm, I'm used to it. <laughs> but I thought that was great advice that you gave. Like the house. I, I never realized that because my interests, I guess, I've never kind of sought that out. But how mm. specialized you can get. Well, that's the internet, right? I yeah. mean, it's like that that porn rule. Like, if you can think of it, they've made porn about it. Like, the, the positive version of that exists, too. Like, if you think of it, there's a community. Uh, there's a podcast of it. There's a yeah. and, and I agree with you that Reddit, I have found Reddit f incredibly positive. And, like, really? if, in terms of trying to uh, gain, if I want information about something, that's the first place I'll go. I'll find the community of that. Yeah. I was going on a camping trip. I found like the Southern Oregon community. I'm like, wait, any suggestions on that? And everybody's super helpful yeah. and they're funny too. I like Reddit. I know it's got dirty underbelly, but. Well, I think it's like anything. You just have to like look carefully for what you want and like, but people love to share their knowledge of something. And so what she was reacting to is like men like to share their knowledge too much. Right. And they don't like that. I also know about the thing. And it's right. like, yeah, you just gotta, you gotta sift through some trash, you know? Yeah. Like any community, there's trash and there's, uh, there's trad. Those are the two dichotomies. Yeah. And that is what you originally went to Reddit to look for, right? <laughs> right. It was like, how Trash. do I make my wife trad? <laughs> <laughs> I'm ready. Uh, get, get a get a full-time job. You are not and... ready. You're too powerful. <laughs> not that trad is not powerful, but you are too powerful of a of a career woman and a, and a badass. You could never do it. I would never want it. And I would have never married someone like that. Ever. Wow. Oh, my God. Never. But I do, do like that. meatloaf. People change. I do like meatloaf. Um, Scallop potatoes. Do you think you could do one more? Uh, absolutely. All right, so we are going to call Christina in Columbia, Maryland. Just a hop, skip, and a jump from our last caller. Columbia, Maryland? I don't think I've ever been there. I mean, isn't all Maryland just D.C.? That's, oh, that's right. an insane sentence. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen The Wire. This is D.C. I think I have been to Columbia, Maryland. Hello. Hey, Christina. Hello. How it's far from D.C. are you? Uh... Not that far. Fucking told you guys, man. <laughs> <laughs> I nailed it. Um, wait, Christina, it's Natasha Moshe and our friend Tawny Newsom. Hi. Hi, nice to meet you. You too. How can we help? Uh, yes. So I would like some advice on how to end a friendship Ooh. of about 20 years. Oh. Spicy. Going to need some more context, yeah, tell us please. What <laughs> they did or, or what, what do they continue to do? <laughs> well, um, I guess for me, I feel like my history with friendships, because I moved around a lot, um, I usually get really close with friends. And then when I move, we just lose contact. Um, 
And then the friendship just kind of fizzles out. Um, but this friendship, <laughs> for some reason, I feel like has just lasted a lot longer than it should. Mm. Um, I think it's probably like lasted 10 years longer than it should. <laughs> <laughs> Do they still like rely on you? They want your advice. They want your yeah. input. They want they want more from you than you're willing to give, essentially. Right. Mm. Right. And I, you go ahead. Mosher. Is that the issue I was going to ask? Like, oh, yeah, that's the issue, because um, like she'll, you know, call me and uh, ask for advice and I'll give her advice and um, she'll just be like, oh, you're so wise, you know, and. That's how like we've connected, but um, it's a one way street. I don't really feel like that connection is there, like for me, and that's pretty much it. Like, yeah. (laughs) Would anything be harmful to you? Like, can you imagine your life without her one hundred percent? And it doesn't matter at all. Exactly. So she. You get in- wow, wow, <laughs> damn! That was the quickest response. I mean, it, it was like a wall came down. Yeah. Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah no. For pure freedom. <laughs> yeah. We change, and it is really hard sometimes with old friends. And like, I, I admit, what I've done is just the slow. Like, what do people do the when fade they- away? Just a very slow a quiet f- quit. Yeah, quiet or- quitting. That's right. Well, Tony, did you you had a question, right? <laughs> oh, did I? I thought you did. Um, I think it was the same as your question. Yeah. I kind of wanted to know like what what the problem was. Like it, it, it sounds like you can't call her for the same type of help because she's not capable. Because she's too embroiled in her own drama. Energy. She's it, an energy sucker. Yeah, exactly. And also, I feel like um, because we've like we haven't seen each other in a long time. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is basically like a long distance friendship, which to me. Um, when I make friends or when I have friends, I connect with them in person. So yeah. to me, I just feel like a phone call every few months just to check in and see like how we're doing. It just quit picking up the calls. Ooh. I mean, I just think you're like a nice person. And like that is a way like what if you're only available? I mean, that's kind of what I did. I'm only available kind of via text and not very often for for these particular people that I feel like I've outgrown who seem like they have a lot of drama coming my way. Mm. But also yeah. that's that's not that honest. So I don't know. I don't know that I'd be able to say, listen, I just feel like this. I don't get enough out of this. That just feels like so much. <laughs> so intense. What would you yeah. do, Tony? I, I think it depends. Yeah. If you feel like you owe that person, like if you feel like you owe that person that honesty, that's like. I, I'm not getting as much from you. I feel that this is a drain, no hard feelings, but I don't think we should have contact. (gasps) Oh, if you said that to me, Tawny, I would be so sad. I know, but like, that's a, what would you be sadder to like call her every week for the next 10 years and never hear from her? Well, she's playing solitaire online and, or just, or just ignoring the call. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, Just ignoring the call while you're seeing her like post Instagram stories and stuff. Wouldn't you feel like a ghost? Well, I will say people like this friend of hers, of Christina's, I do think they just, they're not listening they're not in tune so they just find someone else to blab and throw up their 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 problems at that's true and take from that person that that willing mark who picks up the phone don't pick up the phone forever though 20 years in you just never pick up a call from them again i've been really i don't because the friend sounds persistent yeah 20 years in. Okay, what about this? What about you become the drama that she is bringing to you? <laughs> and you get like, the next time she no. calls you, you just pick up and you're like, I have so much going on. This ha-, And just like unload on her and then be like, I don't think I'm going to be t- able to talk for a while. I have too much happening. And Ooh, then hang up. I was, see, that's interesting you say that because I, w- I was thinking of a half lie like that too. Yeah. <laughs> like a lie where you're not lying. You're saying the truth, which is I don't have time right now. Yeah. But you're saying, you say some version of like, Oh, it's so good to hear from me. The truth is my life is so insane right now. I don't have time for anything. I don't even have time to keep up with my friendship. So like no offense, I'll call you when I get uh, when I get out of the uh, from underwater and then yeah. never call her again. Yeah. Yeah, I, I really like that idea, but I know her. She will want the details and I don't like giving those specific details. Well, they also don't exist. You're lying in this scenario. So you'd have to come up with some details too. Or you'd have to just like exaggerate all your little problems. I mean, you seem like a together person, but like you're a young woman living in this world. I'm sure you're depressed. I'm sure some shit's gone wrong. (laughs) I'm sure some man has hurt you. Just take all of those and like slightly exaggerate Mm. them and dump them on her. 
You I, can find some okay. trauma. What, what can I ask you this? What is your you must have a scenario that you usually when people call they already kind of have an idea. What is your idea of how you would you think you might want to do it? Well, that's why I like call um emailed in because I was asking like advice should I just stick it out and just since it's like a low stakes friendship mm-hmm. should I just stick it out no should I ghost no. her because she she'll call me what she's done in the past is she's called me and she's complained that I don't call enough mm. oh see this I can't Ooh. do she's made comments about like just me not being there as like a good enough of a friend mm-hmm. so I oh I got just, it would be really hard you got, to make that cut. Yeah. You got some Tony, because I got a dastardly plan. Go ahead. I was just going to say, this, that's one of my triggers for me is when a friend is like, because, you know, this business yeah. is so mercurial and it moves us around so much. So whenever I've had a, a, a friend who doesn't understand that and gives me the guilt trip about not being a good friend, because I'm like, I'm a very good friend. So if anyone's doing that to me, I'm like, there's something going on here. That's when I give the hardcore, like, I have too much going on and I need space from you. And I have said those words <laughs> and I'm sure it hurt, but I was like, you're not going to yell at me for not being a good friend when you are draining mm, me. Mm. You've said mm. that to friends before, Tony? Yep. I have too. I've, I've had to have that conversation with people where it's just like, I can't keep doing this. Um, I, I think that that's smart. And you have, you have a, a luck in that you know eventually, if you don't call her back, she will call you and mm. give you the emotional fodder that you need to have that conversation. I think that's your, your smartest bet. Wait for the next time she... Co- don't call her. Wait, don't pick up, but wait for the next time you get a message from her saying you expect too much from me. And then you can say, here's the reality. Ah, uh, I, good one. I don't have time for this friendship. You, you've you got your emotional trigger. Our friendship mm. is, is can she say like stressing me out? Or, yes, you know, yeah. like sometimes when I talk to you, I just feel a little stressed out. And maybe I need to take a break. Yeah. See, because I had a much less uh, forthright and uh, integrity filled answer than you, Tani, which was to write an email. I thought this was genius, but I like your plan better because it's honest. You write an email. You does you you CC yourself. You so you write an email like it's a mass email, but you don't put any of the. It's all BCC, but it's really just her. And then you say hi. If you're getting oh, this smart. message, it's because I'm it, dead. I, <laughs> So you fake your death. <laughs> if you're getting this message, know that I love you and I love your partner, uh, our friendship. But right now I'm feeling overwhelmed and I'm I'm just taking space from all of the friendships in my life. That's now psychotic. She, she thinks it's a group email. And but- please wire the $6,000 to this account in Western Union and make sure you use no punctuation in the whole email. So it looks really real. I am in, trapped in Guiana right now. And I no, I think Tawny's idea is the best. The next time you get one of those guilt things... Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. be honest and say this kind of thing is part of the reason that I need space from this relationship. But, and yeah. Oh, sorry. But I, I just want to make sure that I add like what we're realizing here is you're going to have to do one small step out of your comfort zone to mm. end this. And I think the answer is not to keep at it. Cause if you're friends with someone for 10 years and there's not, your life is 100% not affected by them. You, you don't love them. Like they life's a, if you, if you take her away, something better is going to come in place of this. So I think even if it is like a part-time friend or whatever, like not the best, you know, it's like, why are you wasting your time on this? So I do think the, the, the lesson is going outside. Cause when Tawny said, she said that to a friend, cause I had a friend come at me recently who was like, you know, you're, you can never do anything, you know? And it's like, well, I'm traveling and I'm doing this thing, but I, it's very hard for me to not shrink at that kind of thing. Honey, I'm not your friend. I'm your husband. (laughs) So I think maybe for, I mean, for, for me, I don't know if it's a woman thing. I'm sure it is a little bit like just having to stick up for yourself in that way can be hard. And I think you, you're, what you're seeing is even though it's not going to be the harshest thing in the world, you're going to have to do that. Yeah. And I think that's just what I have. That's what I think a a little bit. I'm afraid of um, coming across as like the bad guy, because Mm -hmm. my whole point in this relationship is being there and being a good friend. That's the only reason why we're here. But um, it's sorry to interrupt you, but it sounds like you've been doing that and she still labels you as not doing enough. Mm. So I think you just got to be OK with the fact that when you it, it, no matter how you do it, when you end this friendship, you are going to be her bad guy. And she's going to run to everybody right. else who still tolerates her and talk shit about why you're not great. And blah, For blah, an blah. hour and a half. Yep. And you just have to know that you acted with 
your own integrity and you have to be okay with it. You know, it, and if you are the bad guy, what, like what's the worst that's going to happen? She's going to be so mad at you. She won't want to be your friend anymore. Boom. That's a big win. That seems, it reminds me of the way my first manager fired me. He, he wrote me and he said, you probably think I have too many clients right now and oh. that I don't call you enough. And you're probably right. Huh. It, I think we should end this. So it was like, it was like, you should write an email like that. She says, you're not a good enough friend. You go, you you could, you could just say it's true. It's true. Our relationship is draining. I don't want anything to do with it. You could also soften it even slightly and just say, you know what? I, I'm realizing you're right. Like I'm not showing up in this friendship and it's because I don't have the mental energy for it. I'm sorry. I think maybe you need to uh, call someone else next time. Mm-hmm. So, so it's almost like your, your an biggest fear is good because you don't have to get into a conversation. About your it. fears about me are correct. Yeah. I, I am not capable of being your friend because that's true. That, yeah. And you so goodbye. I, I like that. And I, I think the point that was made about just having to be the bad guy, that's just the part that I'm just going to have to suck up and just get over and i'm i think i'm okay with that because in the end i think it's just a little draining for me to have to have those conversations where i feel like you know i'm being guilt tripped into not being good enough friend and it just it's not worth it to me unless someone's in your family and you have to be nice to them i yeah. don't really want friends who i don't like at all <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that's like a wild take yeah that's that's spicy you want to like your friends but I, and you live in this town <laughs> but i think tawny said something important too <laughs> Tony said something important too, which was not only do you have to take it on the chin and be the bad guy, you actually are not the bad guy. No, it'll be her perception that you're the bad guy, but you're you sounds like you've been more than a good friend to this person. You've yeah. ten years too too much more than a good pass her friend. along. Yeah, pass yeah. her to somebody else. Put up that boundary and let her go. Bounce off it and bother somebody else. Tell her to get a um a signed headshot at the next Star Trek cruise. And yeah. there's somebody there that really wants. Tell to her talk to come her. talk to me. I'll break up with her for you. <laughs> Thank you. We'll do. Well, Christine, I I hope we gave you some um agency or I don't know. Yeah. Sometimes you need to hear other people say it before you can like have the courage you know yeah i think that's what it is but yeah i greatly appreciate your help and um i like the idea of just kind of ghosting her until she brings it up that i'm not being a good enough friend there we go and then maybe in our conversation i could just say like hey i can see it you can see it I just, I can't yeah. be the friend that you need me to be. You're Ooh, right. That sounded good right there. That sounded good. That sounded she kind of She yeah. kind of combined all the advice yep. and yeah. has a new plan. It, okay. Yeah, it sounds like, but one thing I will say, it sounds good, but it, you sound like a bad guy. That's all I'll <laughs> say in the end. No, you sound like a great person. Good you luck. You sound like a great person. Good luck. All right. Bye, Thank Christina. You. You're awesome. Bye. I think we really changed some lives today. Oh, yeah. I feel good. Yeah. I'm good about myself. It is good to be. Why isn't our relationship better since we're so good? At, I'm just kidding. I'm oh, just honey, what a what a fun joke. What a fun area. <laughs> we gave such good advice. Do you want to? Maybe I can help. Maybe I should step in this. Well, off, I, okay. off your plate. Well, I, I just have need a to... person who I've been married to that seems like ten years too long. Oh, okay. And, <laughs> and how long have you been married? <laughs> Seven. Nine Seven. years. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you're working in a deficit. Uh, we did it. We I did feel it. Like we did it. Tony, you were awesome. Uh, Was do you, I? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Funny insightful hey. like Strong. star trek Strong. Like Star Trek. um has seen the um sex god himself armin shimmerman in action Wait, at a this, con this is what a guy a that you runner. like moshe this is such yeah, a weird runner. he is, he is one of my favorite characters are we embarrassing you by this is like it, it just because like he's a friend and if he <laughs> sees this armin if you see this i don't know what's happening it's me it's me armin i think he has got a great sense of humor but i think he's also going to be like why he'll he'll love it all right so i mean listen. he was kind of a lothario in his way he loved quark loved deeply listen he loved deeply. army give us a call two oh, and three we have him on two, the podcast two, two, eight six it we'll do it my, zero eight um, also if you need some advice army give us uh, uh send us an email <laughs> at endless honeymoon pod at gmail and also we're on youtube join our patreon and also tawny yeah do you got anything you want to plug i can't really we can't what? plug anything right, right? No okay plug. well i'll just oh, say right, people right. were mentioning your show uh when they called in that's why you can't talk about the movies because of the strike not because it's on some sort of in- information yes, embargo we just told i you forgot that. Oh, i did i wasn't what, putting it together okay that's why it. you seemed so annoyed and i was like whoa no 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 union no <laughs> wow, weird <laughs> finally the truth comes out but let's you just know who say else is a hardcore anti-union scab 
Let's Armin go. Shimmerman. No, no, he used to be the president <laughs> of SAG. No, I'm kidding, Armin. I'm kidding. I'm kidding, my friend. Um, but I love you on that show oh, about. You. She is on a cartoon. Yeah. About yes. Okay, we can yeah. talk about it. No, thank and, you. And uh, you're so talented. We're in a movie that we can't talk about. And uh, and do you have any dates coming up? Um, I'll be at. Um, when does this come out? That's a good question. Two weeks. Uh, I'll be at Ottawa Comic Con. I can talk about the conventions. So I'll be at Ottawa Comic Con. I'll be at uh, Farpoint Convention in Baltimore. In uh, I think that's in a few months. What's Farpoint Convention? Is it is it themed or it's just the name of it? It's themed, you know. So Farpoint. M- cool. I mean, it's a Farpoint oh themed. Natasha, could you step back? It's a Farpoint. <laughs> I've never co- been. Oh, that I'm sounds. Excited. This is the first time they've invited me. So. Encounter at Farpoint. First episode of Star Trek of uh, Next Generation. That's the name of the pilot. Yeah, yeah. I believe you. Yeah, trust <laughs> me. Trust me on this one. Tawny, you're the best and Natasha's the funniest. Natasha's never gonna let me come back. No. <laughs> no, I mean we'll I'm, always have you back. I, I and I've watched a couple episodes. I mean. We're gonna get into it. You know what we should do is a slumber party where we just yeah. we just do it. No, Tony also, drink, yeah, yeah, you Tony also likes to drink wine, so maybe we can just Listen, do that. True. You guys <laughs> come <laughs> over. <laughs> you and your husband come over. Yeah. I'll make the meatloaf. Uh-huh. We'll drink wine and we'll just trade back and forth our favorite Star Trek episodes. Oh, and I Natasha love this. at the end good. can show us like a I don't know some sort of like seventies photographer from the Lower East Side documentary. And then who gets pissed on? <laughs> That's a great question. <laughs> Mayor Cutie. I know who gets Mayor Cutie or. Armin Shimmerman. Okay. All right. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye-bye. <laughs>